different gravy not just another Sheffield Wednesday podcast I'm one of the hosts Richard Miller and my co-host is wishing he'd specified the time of delivery for his edible arrangement from all we do is oranges so that the package didn't arrive at half time today Dr Luke Gledall how are you doing today Luke? I'm very good how about yourself Rich? Yeah I'm good thanks yeah um, a little precursor I think the, the really the sort of fly in the ointment of the week has been this weekend's performance but otherwise a pretty de- decent time of it all things considered, how about yourself? Pretty much the same. Anything from uh, from our sponsors today, or no sponsors? No, it's just it's just all gravy all the time. Just maybe maybe not the gravy you want. Often, yeah, you can end up with the wrong sort of gravy. It happens. Uh, well, then let's um, speed ourselves along to breaking hoo hoos. Um, minor point in passing, I think, just in terms of the news. Uh, Supposedly, the players have been paid now, so the, they got the remainder of their January salaries, which I guess is positive all round. Um, <laughs> but the other bit of news really is was the midweek game. Um, do we do we actually also, Rich? Here, do we <laughs> do we talk about the lack of news about transfer deadline day, or as we as oh, yeah. as us Wednesday fans know it, Monday? <laughs> Monday, exactly. <laughs> Well, I suppose that is worth saying, isn't it? It came and went. And, mm. and Conor Grant left. Conor Grant left. That was the big news. We were sort of told by the local press we were trying for all sorts of strikers and things mm. like that, but nothing, nothing Did you? Came I don't know if, Rich, you were quite like me, though I did manage to subject you to the biggest joy that I had on Monday was just endlessly doing impressions of Dom Housen all day to keep myself <laughs> amused. So, I did enjoy that. That was the one. Thank that was you. Bit of the Thank day. you. I mean, the one I enjoyed the most was uh, understand Neil Thompson's request to buy the squad. A bag of fun-sized Mars bars has been approved by Mr. Chancery. <laughs> we all know a fun-sized Mars bar is a choice motivating nutrition that will really get Jordan Rhodes firing, and that's like a new signing. <laughs> I'm expecting the funds to come through shortly for a second mortgage of Hillsborough. In, in which case, we might be able to stretch to. Exactly, exactly. <laughs> so, I don't know. I The thing I really want to say, obviously, about the local press, just well, I just want to kind of really just nail my opinions to the mass here on this one. You love them? Um, I, I, don't, I don't hate the player. I, I hate the game, Rich. Yeah. I hate the constant need to put out clickbait articles. You know, I, I hate the need to say, let's have a Q&A. Do you know anything, Dom? No, not really. The clickbait, the grind of the clickbait is, <sighs> oh, it's so, um, it is so frustrating. But as mm. you say, we know that that's sort of, it's what they're forced to do, unfortunately. Mm-hmm. And then, you know, the star journalists manage to get their little, um, their dishes out and kind of bash a spoon against them to be like, you know, we are, we are effectively starving all the time. Yes. But I, I really felt for the journalists because they, <laughs> they stayed up all day, especially to the late night, to basically say that nothing happened. <laughs> but by the same token, you know, that was the experience of every Wednesday fan. And we were I was I knew that all we were really waiting on was the tweet from from Mr. Housen saying, you know, game's up, you know, <laughs> we're not expecting any business today. And mm. um you know, until that happens, who knows? We've we've been a club that's been embroiled in late late drama previously. Mm-hmm. Generally, not in our favour. <laughs> John Rhodes famously ended up on a loan deal for his first six months because it, we took so long dotting I's and crossing T's. Um, I think I believe that the hold up in that case was over who was going to dot the lowercase J's. Um, we'd agreed on the I's and the T's, but uh, hadn't seen the lowercase J's coming. Speaking of roads, I think so. That's that's a big fun thing. Obviously, I think we'll get on to. But I, I also like the concept of Jordan Rhodes um, having the you know loving a fun sized Mars bar and having the diet of a hummingbird. I think that's very apt. You know, piffy portions of sugary treats to have him in his words ready to run around. Oh, I feel ten feet high. 
<laughs> ready to be largely underwhelming for great spells, but then sometimes, sometimes comes out with an odd moment of brilliance. And that kind of leads us to the other kind of bit of news is the midweek game away at Bournemouth. I mean, we couldn't have been led better onto that, could we, really? No. no not since Churchill have has, has a better leadership been on display as uh, as Luke leading us into the midweek match with Bournemouth. Um, a very pleasing thing. I would. Uh, I'm not going to do this, the 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 homework myself for this, but how many times have we named an unchanged starting lineup this season? Uh, very pleasing to see the same 11 players who just won a game at the weekend given the chance to stake their claim again um that was a nice thing to see and i think by and large we were rewarded for that um pleasant to see dunkley back on the bench Uh, we know he's a big character a big guy to have around the squad um so nice to see him sort of making his way back um yeah, I mean, what did you what, what did you make of the game and the performance? I suppose we could we could sort of take it half by half. It makes sense in a way. I thought it was a really, really, really good performance, you know, and it's just really nice to see us going away and just carrying on with that kind of approach of you know getting at the team and you know getting at the opposition team and pressing high up the pitch and causing some real errors for them, which obviously led to the first goal. Yes, I, I mean, baffling decision making i saw some people call it a, a goalkeeping error but i think the goalkeeper's where you're you know the whole idea is when you make a pass back to the goalkeeper you don't pass it at the goal to try and avoid things like what happened happening you pass it to the side and it sort of means the goalkeeper's got a bit of room for error it means it's not a given <laughs> you're not passing the ball to the center of the goal um but the between the, the pair of them the defender and uh and the goalkeeper, they they passed the ball pass and in the middle of their box. And uh, he just slotted it away so coolly and calmly. It was really nice to see. Mm. His... I mean, it really was a goalkeeping error as well, though, I must say. I mean, I, I agree with you. Yeah, he should have done better with the goalkeeping element of it. Yeah, exactly. Well. It's not the entirety of the, the piece, let's be honest. So, But I, I, I wasn't quite sure what Begovic was doing for that one, because he no. kind of... He kind of changed his mind on what he was doing halfway through whatever action he was doing. It's kind of like saying that, you know, you bring a spoon of soup up to your mouth to eat it, and then you decide to just fling it at a nearby child in the middle of it. (laughs) But as you say, it came from Oz pressuring, which we've not Mm -hmm. done we've not done a huge amount of, but it turns out when we do it, we're pretty pretty good at it pretty it works pretty well for us um and i thought we had some other sort of half decent chances we had another decent shot from uh bannon mm-hmm. uh kachunga had a huge opportunity that he kind of yes i don't think he quite understood how good the opportunity was for himself or mm. i don't know or he got overwhelmed by the moment i can't quite decide what happens but um but yeah he should have done much much better he was sort of one on one with the goalkeeper and and made a real hash of it again after good work from patterson to get the ball to him he's mm. a fascinating sort of footballer is callum patterson mm-hmm. especially now he's got this kind of zen in these goal scoring moments um, I did see somebody sort of commenting that he he didn't come through academy football. His his background is amateur football, so he's one of these guys. Uh, obviously, not quite as successful, but a bit like a sort of Jamie Vardy type, where he's probably learnt more lessons playing a pretty rugged version of the game than he has sort of passing around cones and things like that. Mm-hmm. Um, so it's it's a different sort of upbringing football wise, and. There's an effectiveness to his game and an unpredictability that really I, I must make him an absolute pain to play against defensively. Um, but yeah, these moments where these big moments where it, a finish is required, a, a calm seems to come over him, mm-hmm. and uh, it's really been nice to see of late. <clears throat> um, it, it, we wouldn't be Wednesday without a wobble, so even within this pretty fine performance against. One of the better teams in the division. I know they're in bad form. I know they've sacked their manager following the the, the the game. But man for man, their squad is streets ahead of ours. So, so I think it's still fair to talk about them being one of, on paper at the very least, one of the better teams in the division. Mm-hmm. Um, and I, I thought for for an hour or so, we were we were much the better team against them. Um, 
it was rash from Hutch to give away the penalty. It was. I mean, it was a difficult situation. Um, a situation where there felt like a real kind of challenge. But I mean, it is on the angle. It is kind of running away. You know, there's still a lot for the Bournemouth player to do. I wasn't quite sure yeah. who it was in that situation. You know, you've got Westwood kind of closing down the angle. It, You know, sure, it could end up a goal. But I, I still think there's a lot of skill, skill needed from the Bournemouth player to convert that and put that into a really difficult position for Westwood. Exactly. So, yeah, it feels a little bit kind of rash. It feels a bit needless. It's just that moment where, you know, you kind of get that with Hutchinson for as cultured as he is. And for a player like him who has a bit more of that kind of skill set that kind of comes from, you know, to kind of be in a contrast from Patterson to come up through, to come up through, a, you know, a big professional, yeah. probably at the time that very much now, less so now, a top four club in Chelsea, you know, to have those moments of culture, you kind of see that a lot. But then that's really a moment where he's kind of lost, you know, he's lost that yard of pace in his later years. It's a really desperate lunge to try and get to the ball. I would say it actually precedes any any aging process. I think he's always had that. Maybe it's sort of born of anxiety. But he's got to do something. He's got to he's got to be active in his defending. Mm, mm-hmm. um, not always, but he has these moments where it's almost like something else takes a hold of him, and he's got to. Um, and I think that was behind the reason that he stopped being playing centre back last time round when he when he had his run uh, that we talked about um but it it doesn't matter as much in midfield because obviously there's layers of people in behind you to support you and um, but i think we saw something similar um in the in the the game against millwall with with matt penny uh, we'll, we'll obviously cover that in in detail but he similarly got that sort of part of what you have to do as a defender is sort of let things develop and not you only get one chance to sort of shoot your shot in terms of uh, in terms of the, the, you know making an intervention defensively. And if you mistime it or you get it wrong, you leave other players in 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 difficulty. Or in this case, you know you give away a penalty, which is um, it, it's as close to giving a goal to the opposition as you can get. Really, um, we saw the return of Dunkley, <laughs> and he uh, he looked a long way off. I thought. In, on, on this, on the basis of this performance, mm-hmm. he was very, very lucky not to get a red card. Um, sort of body checking a player that was it through on goal, um, and th- there was a couple of other moments where he sort of skewed headers or d- missed clearances, and it all just looked a little bit kind of worrisome for a moment. Um, but I mean, it's hard to get too churlish about things because the game becomes becomes a wonderful story when we when we score such a tremendous goal um it's nice to be in a position where it's 1-1 but we're not giving up we're trying mm-hmm. to we're away from home and we're trying to win the game we made changes to try and continue to positively impact the game and we were rewarded for those because Kadeem Harris hits a wonderful cross and Jordan Rhodes got an incredible header at the far post rolling back the years mm looking very much like a man not wearing a Sheffield Wednesday shirt, um, leaping like a salmon and powering a header past the goalkeeper. Just so confident and assured. I mean, Jordan, Jordan, fun size, Mars is the right size. Rose <laughs> just just did so fantastic in that moment. It just... It was brilliant. I, I can't believe it. I screamed loudly. I scared my cat. I may have scared one of my neighbours who I share a wall with. Yeah, just absolute brilliance. Just just what exactly we want as Wednesday fans. What do we want to see? And so, it's been so long since we scored a last-minute winner. Like, they're very, very rare in Sheffield Wednesday history oh, yeah. and Wednesday culture. So, just incredible to see. I uh, Just the... What a brilliant cross that was from Harris. Just everything was so quick, so casual, and it seemed like we're really playing to um, a moment that really kind of plays to some of our kind of delights under the best of Monk, is that if we get it forward, we get it forward quickly, and we kind of go on the counter with exceptional speed, we can create something really special in that moment, and that's that's what happened. Yeah, it was because it's... I, I, know, I know people say if we gave Jordan Rhodes a run of games, he'd suddenly become a, a great player. I, m- maybe they're right. I don't think we'll ever find out because I, generally there is not enough in his play to to be rewarded with a, an extended stay in the first team. Mm-hmm. But, 
that sort of finishing is it, it's that kind of you know almost preternatural it's 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 an instinct it's a it, it's a coming alive at the perfect moment and right at the death in the game that was just it was wonderful to see and almost as rare was Kadeem Harris hitting an early cross I didn't even know he could do that. I thought all of his crosses were these like little sand wedge pitches from the byline because that's what that's what he does always mm-hmm. with his mm-hmm. Wednesday shirt. So either he's being given different instructions and that's unlocking a different bit of his game to to cross early, or he's being coached to cross early, and that's nice to see as well. Development is you know, tangible development is so rare to see in football. Um and both those, uh, well, one or one or both those things is happening, and and it was great. It was a fantastic cross, um, and a, and, a, and a brilliant header, and what a great win! A great win away at uh, at Bournemouth. Um, and then we had a huge save by Westwood at the end, just to make sure that we came away with the three points. Exactly. Um, <laughs> it was really nice to see the um, the clip shared of that on the Sheffield Wednesday social media. That was enjoyed by Kieran Westwood as he really enjoyed uh, John Pearson saying <laughs> flip it egg to the one flip it egg. That was that was pretty good. Yes, a huge, huge moment and uh, definitely definitely kind of Kieran Westwood coming back and and kind of showing us and reminding us that he's still so I I don't know how much longer, but still definitely right now can still be that goalkeeper that saves us points. Yeah. So anything else from the midweek game? No, I think that was about it. Let's uh Let's, let's get on to today's game. Yeah. So we come to the Millwall game. We make one change, but it, it, it actually results in two changes. Um, yes. So Origide Ar- yes. Ar- comes out for Dunkley, and Hutchinson moves to the left-hand side of the defence rather than the middle. That is a kind of a monk-type thing where you sort of like... So this is a settled defence that's won two mm. games. Maybe Origide is tired and needs a rest. That's fair enough. He's played... You know, he's played a run of football after not playing very much. But do you need to do two changes? Do we need to... Because that's two-thirds of that back three have changed now. When you could have just done the one change, it was for legs. Anyway, um, slight bit of foreshadowing potentially. But it's just... I don't know. I just... Things like that... If the rule of thumb is that you win the game, you get to keep your place... Surely you want to reduce the changes as much as possible. But I think Dunkley has been a good central player in the three by and large since he since he came in um so it was a scrappy sort of start to the game i think both teams were playing it pretty long patterson was getting no no joy from the referee at all um he he was complaining to the referee an awful lot about rough treatment um including getting smashed with an a forearm or an elbow in the back of his head and that wasn't a foul either but we did get the game stopped for a little while so some attention from the medical staff um <clears throat> penny started pretty brightly i thought i thought mm. um he had a couple of really useful breaks down the down the left flank and in particular the the, the first one of those sort of 8 minutes in he um he sort of built a, a break down that left wing and from a good interception and then put a half decent cross in but it was well dealt with and well you know well defended um <clears throat> then we got to the period around 10 minutes where there was some quite measured decent pressing by millwall we started to look a little bit worried there was a lot of I don't know how many passes Dunkley and Hutchinson exchanged today, but it just seemed like they were just passing it back to each other without much thought of where they were going to, how they were going to move forward or move the game on um, a fair amount today. But Bannon got frustrated and got involved and cleverly picked a, a, a pass out um, beyond the pressing players. Um, I think he played it to, I'm trying to remember now without seeing the, the replay, but he played it to Reach, who played it to Penny, is that right? Yes. This is for the goal. Uh, yes, yeah. Like so, yeah. Then Penny beat his man and got smashed. <laughs> but Kachunga <laughs> picked up the ball from there and then really attacked that space in behind um, the player who did, sold himself on the tackle of Penny. Um, he tried to pick out Patterson. It didn't quite work. There was a bit of a scramble and felt like three or four players were down on the ground and pile of legs and li- other limbs. Um, and then Patterson was the quickest to react, popped up. And talking about a natural sort of finish, he had a lot to do when he stood up and got that ball still. Like he had to mm. look it over the goalkeeper who was who was ready and reacting. 
Um, really good finish to make it one nil. Yeah, I thought that was fantastic. The fact that he, you know, he had that the first ball and it was challenged, and then you know he still managed to keep retain possession, and then you know get up as quickly as he can to regain, you know, to regain his balance and put it past the keeper. Yeah. Yeah, it was it was really it, there are some really strange qualities to Callum Patterson's play, <laughs> you know, which it just adds up to so many of these really interesting kind of scrappy goals. But there's kind of like a weird culture to every single one of them, I want to say. Yeah. He is no, a fascinating right. player to put under the microscope and to look at. But I mean, what he's on seven goals for the season now with this one? Yeah. Yeah. And all a lot of them very, very recently as well. It's it's been a it's been a thick Thick run of goals as of late. It's just yeah, thick run of goals. Nice, a nice thick run of goals is what he's doing. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and what great play from uh, Kachunga as well. I want to say just an absolute live wire in that moment. He just looks absolutely transformed. I mean, I think we've seen promise and we've seen pace from him, but just to have those all come together in those moments, he just yeah, he needs a bit. He needs a goal, I think, to give him a bit more confidence. He's. He's clearly still lacking a bit of confidence, but he's growing game by game. Um, Because he was involved in that. He was involved in a moment before that 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 was pretty promising. And he was involved in several bits after that that I... you know, almost nearly moments almost came to came to came about, and one of those resulted in that sort of, I guess, fairly poor, <laughs> fairly pessy effort. But um, that was a that was a sort of succession of nice bits of football that all could have resulted in a goal scoring opportunity. I think Pelle Pessi ended up kind of taking the taking what was left after that. It wasn't a particularly great opportunity to to score, mm. um, but but it was. It was lots of little positive moments tied together. Yes. Um, yes. And then Pichunga again was right in the midst of that. I love that flick on triangular kind of pass nod from Patterson for yes. Pelopesi to kind of run round as well. Yeah. And I'll also have some really great movement from Joey Pelopesi. I do want to give him some kudos um, because because he's <laughs> going to get some cash from me this episode. He's going to, yeah. He's going to get some kudos to go with his kudos. Mm hmm. Um, there, there was a, a a little confluence of moments um, in a negative sense where um, both Hutchinsons, both teams had a Hutchinson and they both seemed to be wired similarly. Uh, so Sam <laughs> Hutchinson just cleared out one of their players fairly needlessly on the halfway line, uh, somehow didn't get a yellow card. And then the other Hutchinson um, took... Uh, took Palmer out again needless Palmer sort of running out of play and he clipped his ankles uh, and again didn't get a yellow card both kind of cynical needless tackles Mm. (laughs) Um, we got a little warning shot after us so we Wednesday were on top by and large we were we were I think we were like 60 40 in possession maybe even more than I remember at one point it was 63-37 in terms of there you go. So we're nearly at the cusp of that basically two-thirds of the game has been been run by Sheffield Wednesday. And it felt that in every aspect. I mean, it's weird to even think that we were playing so well and in the lead and had the you know the lion's share of possession. I know, and then I think we got yeah, I know it's so strange because it was, it was such a controlled performance. I suppose. It's uh, one of those old cliches is you want, you've got to score when you're in those moments where you're kind of riding the high. Those are the times to sort of get that second or third goal. Who knows if we'd managed to get another goal, who, what, what the cause of the game might have been. Um, but we got a little bit of a warning sign when uh, it was it was the free kick from uh, Palmer getting fouled. Yes. And, and Bannon, we sort of worked a routine. It, it, it almost came off. Uh, we'd isolated. I think Adam Reach was on the far post, and if Bannon had found him, he would have just had a, net, a header into an empty net. Like it, the movement was had worked, um, but the ball unfortunately matched the movement and uh, was a fairly easy clear for the goalkeeper. And then Penny overcommitted. Penny was the man that was supposed to be stay, staying back. Um, he decided he could maybe get a chance if he if he came forward. But he he lost out, and that set them away on a break. And again, it was nice to see he never quite caught up with their player. But Kachunga was the guy charging back to try and close things down. Um, and I think just noteworthy that commitment is something I don't know that we've seen from him previously. So mm. it, it feels like he's getting it, he's buying into it a bit more. But maybe that used a fair chunk of his gas tank was still still getting built up at this period of time. But we were really lucky that. that 
Millwall didn't find that next pass and and make a chance out of that. It didn't mm. um, it didn't amount to much, but it was more luck and and poor play by Millwall rather than good we've done. Did you find it interesting that you know under Thompson now we've really resorted to this three five two, which looked like there, there was always a feeling that even at its best under Monk it never felt like we quite had the personnel especially on that first half showing. I mean, there's a lot more to get into and, you know, we all know. <laughs> we all know the... You all know <laughs> we, the know M- we know the M. Night Shy- Shyamalan twist to all of this going on from here. <laughs> um, but it, it looked like a decent option for our players and it seemed that everybody seemed comfortable and it looked like a really fitting formation for them. Definitely not first half today. Yeah, I, th- I think particularly that what it solves, the big problem we have is we have... Almost all of our centre backs, it seems, are not quite good enough to play in a two. Mm. And having three of them means that we can account for the fact that they've all got a mistake in them, but you got a man there to cover. So, first and foremost, it solves that issue, which is good. <laughs> um, I think I think Palmer and Harris are both pretty good at being right wing back. I think left wing back is more of an issue. Uh, but with time, maybe Penny can grow into that. Although, yeah, he was subbed off at half time today. So, which I I want to get into, but I let's I yeah, guess we'll just it. carry on to, talking yeah. about the rest but of the first I, half. I I, so. I, t- I do tend to agree. I think it works quite well. I think I think it adds to this element of Adam Reach looking a little bit lost because I don't think there's a natural home for him. And I don't mm. think he's good enough to be the left wing back. <clears throat> no. Um, which means he ends up playing the f- the most forward player of the three in midfield, which he sort of does a job in, but it's not natural. And he do- I don't know when he has a good game, he's the he's the heartbeat of it. When he has a less good game, fall down. Yeah. Um, but I, I do. I think by and large, I do agree. This it feels like a comfortable formation for the majority of players. Um, I wonder. I would be tempted to see if Windass could play as that that link up man at the top of but uh with the, with two up tops but we would have to i think i don't know i don't know whether he works hard enough that's so there's also the risk of depleting our options up front later on as well I guess when players so. tire and uh, there's a lot of game there's a lot of games coming then, i'm sorry jordan rhodes is scoring again he um when you say scoring you mean one goal yeah he's back in the goals proved everybody wrong <laughs> start of the game so I'll just expect like this kind of Lazarin, Lazarus rise to as perfect hat trick away at Forest again. Then shall I? That's what you're saying. exactly like that. He finished that season so strongly, and it was mm. really good to see. Um, everybody was heartened. We all gave him a pat on the back. Um, it definitely today when he came on, it wasn't at all like somebody who was making a recipe and accidentally put sugar in instead of salt and it somehow worked. But then next time you go and you're like, so I, I put the sugar in now, uh, <laughs> and then it works. <laughs> it was definitely thought through. There was a plan. It was great. <laughs> You think that was the problem during um, during um, Carlos's time because he was a sugar to the soup, but he wasn't a honey to the soup, was he? Exactly, honey has a flavour of its own. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Sugar's just just sweet. <laughs> <laughs> so we've got to we're, we're dancing around it. We've got to reach that moment. Thirty ninth minute. Joey Pelopesi gives away a stupid penalty, and it was completely needless. There was there was no need to do that. I he pr- you know. He just hauled him down from behind. He may as well have just jumped on his back. Do we do we just not bother training for throwing? Because how many times do we get turned around at a throw-in like that and then panic in shoes? Mm. Um, the I'm, I'm, I'm blanking on the the game now, but I, I can picture the goal. Coventry's Coventry second goal was exactly the same thing. The player backs up into our player in the box. They start to turn and we freak out. And then they can generally do whatever they like or we foul them. And Odebadjo, I think t- two, two of his like four penalties he's given away are the same situation. Um, in fact, the two that he gave away in the same game at Preston were the same thing. If you can hit your player's chest in our box or close to our box, we will freak out and do something stupid. It's all, it's a given, mm-hmm. but it was, 
Oh, it just was a horror show of defending because it's isolated. You know, the only thing the ref has got to look at is you pair and you are dragging his shoulder and falling over. And you're just waiting for him to give in and win his penalty. I know. I almost I think the player was honest for as long as he possibly could be because Pelopessi gave him no choice other than to fall over. I'm having a weird question where I'm thinking to myself now. I'd almost want it to be... I'd almost want it to be a... A penalty which is kind of a 50 50. Mm, yeah. I don't know. Or maybe I'm just wanting it to be a slightly less worse situation, but it's just so, it's An so neat. An honest attempt that you get wrong rather than stupid overreaction. Yeah. Yeah. I can go with that. That's just, there's no need. There's no need whatsoever in that moment. It's completely needless. Hutchinson seems more, seems more logical. Yeah. Of the, two... on there. of the two penalties we never should have given away, Hutchinson is more forgivable. Yes. Um, by the way, we did have a Hutchinson moment. I, I didn't sort of p- pick it up in my notes, but I did mention the fact how frustrating it was to be at this stage of the game where we've absolutely bossed it. We've been miles the better team. Um, and there are only two shots of the whole game have been a free kick that Hutchinson gave away that he didn't need to. Oh, sorry, mm. Penny had given away. That he, apologies. It was Penny that gave away the free kick that Zohor um, hit the target with. And then the penalty. And neither of those two did we need to make the fouls. Uh, he's on the corner of the box. It's not a given that he gets a shot away. It's not a given that it's a goal. Mm-hmm. Uh, just a huge overreaction to somebody showing a bit of strength and maybe surprising you with the bounce of the ball. I know. And then I guess up to that point, bar, because that was the 34th minute, right? And it was like the 39th we considered the penalty. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and that was their only shot on target at that point. And it was so, you know, it was so kind of weak. And that was very tame, wasn't it? Yeah. Westwood made it look just complete, you know, the easiest bread and butter. Yeah. To have, really. Definitely. It was a decent claim from Westwood to make it look incredibly soft. Yeah. So <sighs> are you watching on uh, iFollow or are you watching on another service? I'm on iFollow. iFollow. Yeah. So you similarly at the 43rd minute had from the commentators lots of yes. excitement about something happening in the box whilst we watched the referee sort of scratch his yes. nipple in slow motion. Yes, because I was there thinking, was that something I missed? And I had to like scan back when we got to the halftime whistle. And the answer was, I did miss it, but that's because everyone else on the stream missed it. Yeah. So I have no idea whether that was a decent like pats and penalty shout. I wanted to ask you, and then I went back and reviewed it because I felt like I missed something. Yeah. And it's like, no. No, we we, we 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 will probably never know. Do you know what I thought? It was a it was a foul by the referee on his nipple as he scratched it in slow mo, and it looked overzealous. Right. Okay. That's what it, that's what I saw in that moment. Goodness sake! <laughs> <laughs> Charge people money for this service. Come on. Oh. You could tell that there was somebody like panicking, going, "Oh crap! We're showing the wrong thing. We're showing the wrong thing." Yeah. Because I, I can't even remember what the replay twice or three times. Oh, I can't remember what the the replay was, and it wasn't that. It wasn't that like a bigger deal of like this is something I need to see again. I thought it was the ref giving like an offside or something. I don't know. It was weird. Um, so there we go. That was half time. Mm-hmm. I've got a lot of fun notes from the first half. Okay. So please. why don't we get through that and then we can just get ourselves into a right little rut. We can just have a right nice little. little... Tears. I don't have loads <laughs> of notes about the second half, but what I have. Neither is... do I. Yeah. Negative. Mm-hmm. Go for it. Let's have the fun notes from the first half. So there was one moment, I can't remember exactly, I think it was probably around the, the late 20s kind of mark. Patterson leaving his return throw-in that was coming back with a cool swaggered walk back is the closest <laughs> thing to a football <laughs> not looking back at the explosion as you walk away moment that there is ever been. <laughs> Lovely. <laughs> and at that point, like I, I really want to kind of give some kudos to what, who we looked in that first half before we can see the penalty. Because that felt like the entire momentum just turned. Yeah. The 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 floor dropped out on everything at that point. And then it goes it gets just gets so bad and so terrible. But I really want to focus on how good it looked previously. And I've made a note to say we look dangerous and look like it looks like every player acknowledges and knows that they have some tools to attack at every point. Yeah. It felt like everybody had a little bit on their resume, on their CV. They all had a little bit of like attacking now, kind of within every moment. We just, we looked so good. And yeah. the heartbreaking thing is that we, we looked promising. There wasn't any great, clear cut, amazing chances outside of the one we scored with. But everything outside of that was really good. 
It was and, those nearly, nearly moments, wasn't it? Yeah. yeah. I like the idea of it being on the CV. And I, I, like I want to talk about... And I've got a bit of attacking now. So. <laughs> So I'd like just... to talk about Kachunga and Patterson. So mm. I was really enjoying Kachunga's work in that first half. Yeah. Him and Patterson look like a great odd looking partnership. So <clears throat> it's like meeting a very beautiful woman at a party. And then you're disappointed to see her visually underwhelming boyfriend that's with her. Then later in the evening, you've had a few beers and then you kind of, you kind of smile and you go, yeah, he's quite charming. And you kind of see, you kind of see what the foundation of this relationship and what she sees in, in this uh, less than uh, less than beautiful looking man that she's with. <laughs> so Patterson and Kachunga, it's the magic eye of forward partnerships. Now I can see it. <laughs> and in this weird world where Callum Patterson, who's a player who we typically thought was basically not the man <laughs> to kind of lead Wednesday's line, and now he's a man who... Hell, I want to clone him. I want to have two Pattersons on the pitch. Yes. I'm going to be honest. Or if we bring him off, we're going to bring on a new Patterson to replace the old Patterson who's tiring. Yes. Basically, that's all I ever want to do. I'd like to see um, <clears throat> the Wednesday initiation. You know, the Wednesday and have the players have the players yeah. do the initiation where they sing a song. Yeah. So I'd like to see a kind of like a Miss World type competition for Callum Patterson to audition <laughs> the forward partners that, and it's where. One point, actually, so they have a bikini round, obviously, uh, but they also have a I Could Be So... They, they could do a song. Ah. I'd love to have them sing I Could Be So Good For You, the theme <laughs> reminder. And there was just something so unique in Elias' stunted Deutsch delivery that took the cake. <laughs> I I think there's something there, because it's not... I don't know. I, I feel like, especially when Kachunga's getting going and he's got this belief and he has this ability and pace, he can just kind of float around like a bee and just in almost kind of like this live wire free roll and patterson can move a little bit of as long as he's kind of in and yeah. around that box winning the headers doing the doing the work bringing out these kind of rough charms that he has i i think that could really work and i was really happy to see that no i i agree i agree i don't is there more from the first half sorry i don't want to that's pretty much it i'm going to be honest i mean okay. it it probably seems natural that you know, obviously the Millwall penalty is scored by Zahor. Yes. It, well, I thought that was going to happen with the free kick. I thought, here we go. This didn't need to be a free kick. It is a free kick. I I remember from watching the videos when we were linked to him that he likes to shoot from there. That's one of the things he likes to do is put kill them into the top corner from there with his left foot. And I just thought, here we go. <laughs> But um, as you say, it was a very tame effort. But he mm-hmm. he got a he got a better chance. Thanks, Mister Joey P. Um, so I I think given a chance to watch the game again and sort of maybe pour over uh, moments and highlights, uh, maybe I would be able to kind of come up with some answers here. But a huge difference between the first half and the second half was how many headers Patterson won, and I don't know whether he ran. He got tired, or whether it was something tactically they did differently. Um, I know they brought on a sort of a defensive midfielder to let the other two go forward more. So maybe having that shield just was a, an extra person for Patterson to battle with all the time, and it just overwhelmed him. But as you say, that partnership with Kachunga, one of the reasons it's so enticing is Kachunga's got that pace. He seems to enjoy mm. running the channels, and Patterson can can pass with his head. Uh, he can he he can aim where the ball goes. You know, I know that sounds like almost a silly thing to say, but it's not a given. Atty knew you didn't. You never really could guess where it was going to go. Mm-hmm. Um, so if Kachunga's happy to break into space, and Patterson is strong enough and has the wherewithal to find those pockets of space, then that's quite a tantalising thing. And as you say, as a partnership, then if Patterson can spin into the into the middle how, after heading the ball then there will be goals that come from that because there'll be defenders that can't keep track of Kachunga. And we know that Patterson, given the opportunity, will score those goals. So it is, it's an enticing partnership. I, my, worry, my worry with today's game is the baby goes out with the bathwater in some ways and some of these promising links and ties and performances that we get washed away because we've had one bad half of football out of six that's my slight worry but um mm. let's let's look at the second half so we made a change at half time we love making five subs at the moment don't we yeah we really do we really do 
And today it almost felt like every set of subs we got a bit weaker. Yes, completely. I mean, that was the big thing. I, I, I wasn't quite understanding why we're taking Penny off. Maybe not quite as successful as he's been previously, but he did have a hand in the goal. Well, that's the. I suppose that's the frustration. I think he showed he showed some of his weaknesses defensively, and I guess Romeo is one of their best players. He's one of he's probably the one of the best right sided players I've seen in this league. To be honest, I, this is, we've 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 spoken about him several times. He tends to shine. He's a pretty he's a pretty fantastic player all round. Um, is is Romeo? Um, so maybe they didn't feel he was coping with him. I don't. I don't know, or or just Penny was tired. Who knows? But yeah, the frustrating thing was we'd seen quite a lot of positives from Penny going the other way. So mm-hmm. if Romeo was going to push forward and attack, that would give Penny opportunities as well. This but that opens up yeah. space. In. Yeah. Um, so Harris came on. Harris has been out of favour. We haven't heard about any injuries, so presumably he's been dropped on on form as of late. He's not been able to get into the side, um, but he came on at half time. And it, at first it was a like-for-like like switch, wasn't it? So he went in at the left wing-back position. But Millwall had clearly had, he, despite the fact they got an equaliser, they'd still had a rocket at half-time. They changed a few things tactically, and they yeah. they looked right up for it, to be fair. Yeah, again, there's a no, we don't really have a great response to the other team having a response. No. We just always look surprised by the fact that they've got the temerity to be different one half to another. Mm. Um, so they 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 had the bit between their teeth. They produced several chances. Fifty um, fifth minute, there was a pair of saves from Westwood. Uh, one was a deflected shot. The other one was from a close range header. Mm. Um, we just couldn't seem to get on the ball and build no, anything. No, there was no. Like I said, we're <clears throat> we're surprised that the other team has the, as you said, the 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 audacity. Yeah, to be like attacking the game and having a different handle on the game, but there's nothing we can seem to do to derail any of their momentum. It felt like a few moments. It looked like a little bit of that was coming. I remember a bit. I didn't make many notes in the second half. I remember one bit kind of early on, maybe just after the 50 minute mark, where Hutchinson did really well to kind of take it out of defense. Yeah, but I just I don't know. I can't even remember how did we even try and kind of get the ball forward. Well, it was all straight down the throat of their defence. And it seemed like that what they did was with Patterson is they had somebody that would like wrestle with him and then another player would come over the top of both of them and win the header. And just nothing was sting. It just it just kept coming back. Yeah. Um which then led to another kind of stream of attack from Millwall. Exactly, basically just yeah, running yeah. straight at us. Around the hour mark we well 59 minutes we made another two substitutions. So we took Palmer off, which meant that Harris went across to right wing back and <sighs> Reach went to left wing back. Um, just absolutely desperate substitutions. I just don't know what the plan was with bringing Shaw and Rhodes on. Well, I think the, the purely the plan with bringing Shaw on is, is similar to the plan of bringing Dunkley on, which is basically like, you've got players back from injury, you're excited about having them back from injury, yeah. you need to get them games. They need to get game time because there's a lot of games coming. Like, that's the only reason, really. But Shaw like, looked complete. I didn't know what job Shaw was being brought on to do. No, no. It didn't look like he'd been told. He just looked completely well, lost. I thought Shaw was supposed to be, like, left wing back. But, well, I'm pretty sure I'm pretty sure Reach moved across for it, although it didn't work. I mean, what happened was we just didn't cover left wing back properly mm. or the left flank properly for the whole of the rest of the game. It just became where they attacked down. I think every single goal came from. Which is why it was so pronounced that, oh yeah, well, the the definitely the last two goals that Millwall scored were came down the right. Yeah. And probably a good degree. I mean, I do like him as a player, but I do want to say like uh, uh, Romeo had the absolute, you know, he had the keys to the to that, oh, yeah. to our left flank, his right flank. He yeah. is a very good player. I do like him a lot, but yeah. Very difficult, very difficult. I don't know what exactly we were trying to do. You know, again, and then it almost felt like an embarrassed kind of, hold my hands up, I've got this wrong, by bringing on Urahide. Yeah. For Hutchinson. Yeah. Which I just, I don't understand. I don't, why are we just continually shuffling? I don't know. I think that's a real failing from Thompson today. As, as great as everything has been, I, there was no need to change a winning lineup. 
unless there's something else we don't know, which there could be the opportunity for, obviously. You know Spinal Tap, the, this is Spinal Tap, the film. Yeah, yeah. And you know the famous conversation with about the amp, you know, this one goes up to 11. Mm-hmm. That's almost what he's become with these five subs. It's like, yeah, but you know, you just don't, just still make subs when you need to. Don't, you don't need to make five. Yeah, but I can make five. No, just, <laughs> just do the ones that make sense at the time. Yeah, but I can do five. So yeah, yeah. I'm going to do five, aren't I? You don't always need to do five. <laughs> More subs, bringing on three subs. Okay, some t- we all remember moments where that's worked brilliantly. Um, you know, famously the playoff final, we made we made all three changes. Uh, the playoff final in League One made all three changes at once, turned the game around. What we don't remember is the other ninety nine times where you make three changes at once and you lose any semblance of rhythm and any idea of what you're trying to do. Because that's hap- that's what happens more often than not. And what having five subs now allows a manager to do is to ruin our rhythm on on two separate occasions because you can make two subs, which is a big change, twice. Mm. Um, you can you can make two and a three if you want. You can really have you know shake the earth um, uh, if you want to. <laughs> but oh, I don't know. <coughs> this just felt like flailing. It felt like a drowning yeah. man grasping at whatever. And what they grabbed you know, a hold of was Josh Windass and Jordan Rhodes. Do you know what this kind of feels like? It just kind of use a bad analogy. I don't know if it's quite the same here, but quite the same in the UK. But they they make a or at least they make a big deal about like the McDonald's McPicks menu, which is all like the value options. Right. Yes. And it it almost feels like I've never felt they've gone on with this, but it's it's kind of a bit like you can make all these combinations, and then you've enticed someone with the idea that you can have so many things that you've basically derailed them from the fact that all they really wanted was like a cheeseburger and some fries yes that you end up getting a filio fish and a mcflurry and then you end up like dipping the filio fish in the mcflurry you know (laughs) yeah exactly it's like the fact that we can make so many options it kind of bamboozles some people and it feels like it's in this situation it's bamboozled thompson yeah i don't Um, know it it happens in pokemon as well doesn't it you know like (laughs) Um, you know, you get like, oh, War Turtle was confused, and in its confusion, hurt itself. And that's <laughs> like... <laughs> Which Tomo, Pokemon? Tomo used subs. He confused himself, and in his confusion, <laughs> <laughs> oh, but it just felt like quicksand, and and every set of subs just quickened mm. our descent into the quicksand. I uh, would, I would from... love it so much more if the post match analysis was Thompson just going, Tomo, Tomo. Damo, damo, damo. Levels of emotion. Tomo, mon, gotta sub them all. Ah, <laughs> oh, excellent. <laughs> so the first goal, uh, uh, it has to be said. So similarly to um, praising Pelopesi, because what came later was less, yes. um, yeah. less full of praise. Westwood was pulling out great saves left and right mm. um until the until the sort of pressure told and then once the floodgates opened he was as guilty as every anybody else for the bad stuff that was happening um so effectively there was another flurry of chances for millwall at, at the 67 minute mark so they got another good chance westwood saved uh, saved sort of out into the middle of the box and Dunkley got a big brave block on it that p- put it out for a corner. And then from the resulting corner, we all just seemed to stand and watch while their player sort of rifled his effort home. It was Malone that scored the first. Um, but again, but it was Westwood getting beat at the near post. Um, I know it was, it was a good shot, but Westwood did get both hands to it, I think, and still failed to sort of stop it going in. Mm. Um, it's not Westwood's fault, and as I say, he performed heroics to make sure it was still one-one at that stage. But yeah. it still doesn't remove any criticism from what happens next. No, um, I do want to say that Malone goal was really fantastic work for. I thought it that was. was a really, really good goal. Like, I mean, you can you can look at like staggered as a Sheffield Wednesday defender, being like, "What are they? What are they doing? They're running and passing. The, what are they? What? How? How dare they?" How dare they do such things? <laughs> I mean, you can do that, but genuinely, that was a really, really good move. 
from it what was. I own. So just nod it out, get the collector thing. And the bit where he kind of nodded it, I mean, it, it kind of felt shades of reminding me a little bit, especially that nod on to kind of mm. get himself a bit of space. It reminded me a bit of Proton Away at Alden, a little oh, bit yeah. with that kind of flick on. Yeah. Um, yeah, disappointing for that. I think the biggest thing, so that's kind of like, it's like, okay, the second goal has come in. Okay, how are we going to recollect ourselves and try and think about something in this game? And no sooner <laughs> have we actually managed to get to the end of that four process than Millwall have scored a third. Yeah. Which, I don't know. Full of praise for this goal on the. Uh, I don't understand. Yeah. On the commentary. And I think there was no. He did not mean. No. It was a cross that went it in. It was. It was. Because you look at him like on the re- maybe they didn't get the benefit of the replay, but he doesn't even look at the goal. He looks across to where he's going to cross it twice on, on on the way, and then he spuffs the cross, but he spuffs it right into the the opposite top corner. Once again, I have no idea what Westwood was trying to do. He sort of spinning around, doing a bit of pole dancing around that near post. Um, <laughs> but it's hard to blame him when you know, even the guy that kicked it didn't know where it was going to go. So, um, you know, how are you supposed to predict it as a goalkeeper? I just can't start thinking of Kieran West as a stripper now, Rich. <laughs> Kieran's a dancer, dancer for money. Yeah. <laughs> mm. uh, it just... <sighs> As you say, you 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 let in one, and you're like, okay, let's gather ourselves. And before you'd even had a chance to really like, before I, I don't think I'd even finished writing my note about the first or the the, the first goal in the second half, the, the one that made it two one. The the third one has gone in. Yeah. Um. We then, you know, we have to make another couple of subs, don't we? Because we've let in two goals. So let's bring on Josh Windass for Callum Patterson and mm. Urigide. And inspiring changes that's going yeah. to turn the game around. Yeah. Um. I th- so the other, my last note is that is the last goal that um, that made mm-hmm. it four one. So Bannon makes a series of increasingly bizarre decisions. Uh, first one being running into a crowd of players. Then the final one being a tame lofty pass that fell ten to fifteen yards short of its target and handed possession to Romeo in acres of space. He carries it forward and skids an effort along the ground into the far corner. Um, I believe it took a slight deflection uh, from Bradshaw, but it, it was the sort of deflection that sort of moved it up and down a bit. It didn't move it left or right, as far as I could tell from the angles we saw it from. Uh, just desperately poor from Bannon, awfully from the defence. Dunkley, I don't know what, I don't know why Dunkley was running backwards so fast. You know, uh, he would have been better trying to put a foot in, I think, or just putting a stop to him anyway. Um and again, I, th- I think Westwood should do better. I don't think you should get beat by that sort of effort from the edge of the box. But maybe a- another angle might take some of the sh- shade off Westwood if it if it did deflect side to side. But it didn't look like it did from what I've seen. Ugh. Mm. Just um, I don't know. Just so hard to take after what a what 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 amounted to a wonderful first half. Yeah. Um, and it wasn't. We've had games where I think, you know, we can sort of feel sorry for ourselves and lick our wounds sometimes when we've had games where like, oh, their bench made a difference that turned the game round. We were the ones that made all the, you know, the Rose and Rosa subs today. Um, mm. they, did make, they did make four changes in total, but I don't think they were hugely influential in the, go- the goals. I, they got a hold of the midfield in the second half. Patterson stopped winning, stopped being finding it as easy to win headers. I do think that was in part. I think Thompson just sort of followed him round and just made his life a bit more difficult. But to help him out, we brought on Jordan Rhodes, who who did nothing, nothing at all today. Yeah, he won one foul. I think that's what I counted. Um, mm-hmm. Jordan Rhodes makes you eat your words one game, and then the very next game makes you think, no, actually, I'm gonna. I'm going to probably puke up some of those words. <laughs> I, think, I think most of them were right. <laughs> Anything else before we kind of, like, what do we do now? We pick a villain of the piece? Or? We pick a villain of the piece. <laughs> yeah. I think I know who it is. <laughs> okay. I've seen the players lined up against the wall. I now know how tall they are because we've got the heights behind them. And uh, you shouldn't be surprised to know it's uh, usual suspect Joey Pelopesi. Yeah who gives the moment to completely turn the game, completely throw away all the hard work, all the great work that we've done, and just completely swings a pendulum in the opposite direction. 
Well, you, you could argue he, he had the opportunity. He actually had an opportunity at both ends, didn't he? And it's only the one at our end that he um, he made pay because he had yeah. his his shot. If he'd finished that shot, that would have been two nil. Um, you know, we probably would have won the game comfortably from there. I would I would have thought, but instead he uh, he makes his presence felt heartily in our own box, and uh, the whole game swings around. Hmm. Mm. So it's it's tricky. It's going to be a heck of a job to pick them all back up again in time for the midweek match, the all important midweek match with with Wickham. Who do you think gets a? Who would you for yourself pick as someone who's going to be like a a marginal mention? Because I I feel like we need to give some kudos to Westwood. Yeah, but I also feel that the problem is I think any Sheffield Wednesday goalkeeper can't really withstand. Just being on the end of like I don't know how many chances. I mean, have you? They had twenty-one shots. I don't twenty-one know how many shots. That's insane because it felt like there was only I can only remember two shots from the first half, and one of those was the goal. Yeah, they had they had twenty-one shots in total, nine on target, five mm. off target, mm. and seven blocked shots. So he's kept five of those out from yeah five of those other on target going out. Which, considering some of the quality of some of those shots, I think is yeah. Pretty decent, I want to say. He made some great sets. So, yeah, we could have been dead and buried much earlier in the game. Um, I think that's maybe fair for an honourable... I, I think Patterson... Yeah. It's so tricky because it's a game of two halves, it obviously. Is. It is. But it was another very cool finish. And I think if he was given the right support, he could have probably come through the difficulties in that second half as well. I just... We, we're not good enough to be in a situation where... <laughs> We're battling ourselves along with the opposition. We're never going to win that battle. We need to we need to get out of our own way first and foremost, and then probably hope that the opposition have a bad day. <laughs> then we might win some games. But um, yeah, just odd, odd substitutions, changes where they don't need to be made. As I say, I, it start. I'm, I, I don't. You don't want to be proven right, and it wasn't necessarily the the heart of things, but. Why does Dunkley have to come back in? And the fact that he brought Origide on, he's clearly fit enough to be on the bench. He's clearly fit enough to play yeah. half an hour or whatever it is of the yeah. game. Like, why not keep the team that won? We beat one of the best teams in this division midweek. Let them keep their places. Exactly. Dunkley had been, it was awful when he, he almost gave the game away when he came on at Bournemouth and then he gets a start. He's rewarded with a start. It's baffling. <sighs> It's it's just things like that where like we are not we don't have a good enough squad to overcome stupid decisions or bad decisions. Um, we kind of need to get everything right in the first place, and then we've got a fighting chance. And just I don't know why do we make it harder for ourselves? Anyway, there we go. Uh, I guess you know we've got another chance. The 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 the, the positive thing about this ridiculously intense run of games mm-hmm. is is we get. We get the chance to um, to correct things in fairly short order. So Tuesday night brings a, a very important match with uh, with Wickham, and we're back at Hillsborough where we're on a, a pretty decent run of form. So fingers crossed, we can can turn things around. I really hope so. I really hope we can get some some degree of um, payback from yes. you know a really disappointing result at Wickham as well. And Wickham today lost three nil to Forest, so they're not in particularly great form themselves. So Hopefully we can do something good. Who knows? Oh uh, yeah, but that that for any self-respecting Wednesday fan that sends off all sorts of uh, warning bells that they're in bad form because I think Millwall hadn't won at home since October. <laughs> oh nice. Oh that's good to know. I was not aware of that, but thank you for bringing that to my attention. If you, we're like the Ghostbusters for bad runs of form. <laughs> Can't score for Toffee. Roll up and score five. Can't win at home. Get ready to fill your boots. The Wednesday is coming to town. <laughs> but also oh typical of, of Wednesday to uh, to beat Bournemouth and then uh, and then lose to Millwall, the less glamorous of the two sides. That's just what we do. Mm-hmm. Um, there we go. So the end of another week. Uh, we'll have a we'll have a, a better picture of things next by the next time we speak. Uh, and yeah, I hope I hope people manage to you know continue to have a good a good time of things between now and then, and uh, you know. I second your you, wish, Rich. Yeah, you second my, my sort of half-hearted attempt at positivity. Yes. Thank you, Luke. I'm going to be a backbencher in Parliament. Go oh, to that one. <laughs> 
Well, yeah. So we've got two home games in a row, Wickham and Swansea. So we could we could we could be looking back on a couple of wins mm-hmm. or a couple of positive results at least. Let's here's hoping. Uh, but I'll say cheerio for now and wish everyone well. I'll see you, see you, Rich, and have a good weekend. Yeah. Thank you.